All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming into the Sifu time to watch this uh, 30 minutes of my, my show. Now, um, I have a very simple information that is showing on the screen now where it has a, a bunch of data, crunching numbers and so on. So let me just zoom in and have a look. These are very simple data where you are working on every day. So I didn't talk about cleaning up the data because Saiful had done the job very well. Now I'm, going to, I'm just going to continue from here, assuming that uh, this is what uh, we have in our table, in our data, and how are we going to make them become uh, dynamic. Right? So this, this is where uh, I'm, I'm going to come in. I'm going to put in some formulas where if I'm going to add on a few more information in my database, I would like, I would like all this total which is outside. Now I would like you to have an a, a imagination now that this whole information here is basically in a different worksheet and right, we can cut and paste this over to another worksheet later and see how it works huh? but later we will just uh, view it next to each other and you can see what are the things that uh, i have written here so the first thing i want to talk about in this example here is something that I believe everyone here should already know which is I want to know what is the total very simple we just click the auto sum now you can do that or you can do that very quickly by just actually highlighting the whole set of data here and just click auto sum that will do the jerk you don't have to do one and then pull down you don't have to do that yes again uh, I think it's a bit too fast now you just highlight all your data just click the auto sum once and there you go all the data is already uh, populated accordingly yeah? let's take a look at the reference they are using yep this one this one see they are going to seven this is eight this is nine and the next one is ten so i'm going to be adding some row 11 12 13 14 later huh? later on so what i'm going to do in this following the uh, data that I already have, I'm going to find out what is the grand total of this particular information here. So let's take a look. Huh? I'm going to put equals to sum. Now this is what a lot of people do, right? They just highlight the range. All right, got it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a formula text here for this cell so that you can see the movement of the particular formula is like e5 to e10 that's what i was using just now e5 to e10 so the function formula text is used to show the formula inside the cell so i just a bit lazy a bit lazy i do not want to come here and show you each time so i i put it up here so that you can have a look now the next thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to grant i want to use the grand total not by reference now by name so i'm going to highlight this highlight this I'm going to call this range. I highlight all this. I'm going to call this one as amount. Now, I purposely use a different name. I know this is called total. I just use a different name here, amount. So this is called amount for this range now. And I'm going to write the formula, the same formula, equal to sum amount. So it still gives me the same answer. So I'm going to put this. All right, so look at the formula, it's the same. Now I'm going to reserve this later. I'm going to reserve this a little bit later. I want you to see the, the, the reference a little bit different later. So I'm going to tell you that uh, the dynamic reference of it, how, how do we do it, right? So what is going to happen next here is that if I add in new data, if I add in new data here, now let me just be a bit lazy. I just copy this uh, first two record, make a copy, and I push it down here. Do you see any difference in the answer? The answer is no, right? It's still E5 to E10. You see that? They are stuck with this range. Okay? They are stuck with this range. You see that, that selection? Yeah. It will be still stuck until E10. It will not include the new record that is given here. Now, I'm going to remove them. They are not very good. So I would like to introduce a function to everyone that is, I believe is a little bit classical, is a quite a classical function. 
which is called offset right the function is called offset right, this function eh? now let me just uh, do it like I'm actually writing a formula but I put an apostrophe in front um, so what do they need in the offset function now in the offset function what they are going to ask you is where is your starting cell your starting now let me just put it in layman language lah, eh? St starting cell your starting cell can be only a single cell it cannot be a range of cell it can be only one cell now to begin with the function offset as the name suggests is actually to move your starting cell somewhere else so that that's the purpose besides that offset will also be able to help you make a range of cell so you have to define what is the what is the high and what is the width so i will talk about that in in shortly eh? so number the first thing you need to tell them is your starting cell where are you starting so if you are starting somewhere and you want to move it then how many row do you want to move then followed by how many column you wish to move so row as in like if you are moving it down then it's a positive positive value but if you are moving it upwards then it's a negative value so you can put a positive or a negative number in that case it is a number column in in that case they are moving left or right so if you're moving to the right it's a positive number but you're moving to the left it's a negative number so it depends on where's your starting cell okay now comma that's where comes in the important information that i i want to share with you so we are going to use the offset to find out how many records are there in total that i want to use it for my sum now this is a very classic formula that you can still use and it still work I'm going to give you a few examples how you can actually become a very good formula. Now, the next thing that you need to tell them is the width. How wide is your selection? Is it... So, I, I think I made a mistake. It's not the width. It's the height. Yeah. How tall is your selection in the first place? Right. Suddenly, it just kicks in. All right. Now, how tall? When you say how tall is your selection, that means that's going to be like how many rows. Now, I always mix up with width and, and height in, in, in some cases. Eh? When, when I want to explain, then I realize hey, I made a mistake. So it's like the height. So that is how many row. Right? Then lastly, the width. Now, both this height and width comes with a default value. It's one. Both cell, uh, sorry, both row and column, they come with a default value, which is zero. So these are some of the things that you're going to write later. It looks complicated. But after a few practice, you you will you will like it. You will like this formula. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see. I'm gonna show you all the tips here. But you can choose the easiest one to use. Right? This is not the easiest, of course. Huh? This will be the hardest. I'll start with the hardest. So this is where you are going to use this formula. But I'm gonna write this formula somewhere hidden. Huh? Somewhere hidden. Now, what I mean by somewhere hidden is that I'm going to write it inside here. The word amount i don't want to write it inside this formula here which i can do all right so i'm going to do this now in front of you so i say equals to sum now i'm going to write offset offset and i'm going to tell them please start here start at e5 all right start at e5 comma now since i'm already at that position that total position then i don't have to move it so I'm going to put there 0, 0, 0. Then what about the height? Okay, the height is how many row? Now I'm not going to come here and say, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then I'm going to put a 6 here. Now this will defeat the purpose of writing the function anyway. So this is where I'm going to embed a function here. Right? I'm going to put it into a count function. So why I'm using the count function? Because I want them to count only the numbers. Right? Only the numbers. So therefore, I'm going to count, open a bracket. I'm going to start from here, E5. Now, let's just say I anticipated that my number of row will not exceed 500. So I'm going to put that. Now, if you say yes, it's going to be more than 500, then put 5,000. If 5,000 is still not enough, 50,000, is it enough? Not enough, 500,000, is it enough? Now, you cannot put 5 million, of course, huh? because the maximum is 1 million row. So now, I'm not going to make that 
big of uh, data. I'm just going to make like 50 will do. Then I'm going to close it. Now, what's happening here is they are going to count from E5 to E50. How many cells are there in this range contains number because I'm using count. Yeah, I'm using count. So that that's count means I'm going to count numbers. So I'm going to put a close bracket and then comma. Now the last one is the width. My selection, how many columns are there? Just one. So I'm going to put one. Now if I don't put the one, I'm actually quite okay because the default value is one. All right, so I'm going to close it. I'm going to complete the formula like this. Close bracket. Let's see if I can get the answer 12876680. Yeah, I'm still going to get that. Now the formula looks a little bit too overwhelmed. Right? The formula looks a little bit too overwhelmed for many people. So why you do a sum then you have an offset inside? So to avoid any query, to avoid any query, what we can do is that we use the name for that range and we use the name to represent this formula. So let me write this formula one more time. Eh? So I'm going to this thing called the formulas name range. So I'm going to write the formula one more time. Let me just pull this one up a little bit. So amount. So I'm going to highlight this. Equal. Right, equal. Equal what? Of set. Now the way you're going to write it here is the way that I wrote it down there just now. But this time I'm not going to type in the, the cell. I'm, I'm not typing in any of the cell. I'm going to use my mouse to do the selection. So I'm going to click on E5. You notice when I do that, it actually comes up with Excel reference E5. Excel reference is my worksheet name followed by the cell itself. Huh? So I'm going to put a comma. Then I'm going to put zero, comma, zero, comma. Now, why why is it that I'm going to put that two zero in, in here? It's because I'm going to tell them start from E5, don't go anywhere. Zero row, zero column. So they are not going anywhere. Uh, so that's that's what I am planning to do. Now the next thing that is going to happen is I want them to do the counting. Remember, I was writing the function called count. So I count. So I'm just going to start from now. Open bracket. I'm going to start from B. Uh, sorry, E5. So again, let me zoom in. Let me show you. I say count. Open bracket. Then followed by E5. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put a colon. So that it will also, oops, sorry, let me just do this again. So E5, then I quickly put a colon and it will say E5 to E5. Remember, I just put 50 just now. Uh, so it's the same thing that I'm doing earlier, right? E5 to E50. So if you think 50 is too little, you can put 500 or else 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000. It's just up to you. But I'm just going to stick with 50 so I don't have a, such a big number. Then put a close bracket, comma, 1. Now, this is the exact formula that I have written out here. Right, so let me check if my formula has any issue. Huh? Now, when you, when you come here, you want, the, you want a name to represent the formula. You just check if the formula works. Huh? Let's click the check button here. If there's a pop-up, that means something is wrong somewhere. So it's quiet. Kudos, huh? we got it done. So same formula that we have written. So I'm going to... Make a copy of this. Make a copy of that. I'm going to paste it out here soon. Eh? So let me just put it up here. Uh, yeah, this one. I'm going to apostrophe with that. So that's the formula that I have written. Now I'm going to show you all the formula. I'm not going to hide anyone anything from you guys. Sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. Yeah, this is the formula. It's the same thing. All right, this one and. This is the formula I use for the amount. Same thing, same thing. Okay, now, it's a lot shorter when I write it out here, but uh, when I write it inside, it comes with the reference. Now, the good news is this. If I go to another new worksheet now, right, it can be anywhere outside here. This is what I'm gonna, equals to sum amount. I get the same answer. You see that? I don't have to write equal to sum, Offset, then I go there and click, 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 enter and I get the answer. Now I'm only using the 
form okay let me show you the formula text here I'm only using the same function that I wrote it's now some amount so I'm making it very dynamic now where I can use this formula anywhere in my workbook the word amount because amount is not represent as a range of cell but it's actually representing uh, what you call it a formula the word amount representing a formula so why Kelvin why are you making life so difficult it's, it's not difficult the setup the setup looks like a lot of work right but you will love it later now let's take a look at all this number now let's take a look at all the numbers huh? okay all these numbers that I'm using so if I go if I highlight two rows here copy I put it down here now and I pull down this answer here right? this is actually a formula I pull it down you notice everything else changes right so except for this one it will still be e5 to e10 yeah, you see this this is still e5 to e10 but I added new item here the moment there is a total you will notice that this is dynamically changing so the amount is actually has an offset function the sum itself has an offset function so that that will help that will help all right so these are some of the things that you can do just just a bit of it huh? now I started off with something so difficult you will kill me later when I show you how easy it can be yeah but yeah I just want you to understand this one it's a very classical kind of a formula that you can use I, I call this classical because I don't use it anymore now why because there are easier way for us to do that this is how we do it last time long long time ago when the new feature wasn't wasn't uh, populated yet huh? now let's talk about writing the formula for online direct and retail let's talk about that huh? so let's drop this for a while we'll still come back to this definitely all this is going to be uh, in effect but I, I just want you all to see what else we can do huh? now I'm going to name okay let me just remove this set here I'm going to name this column as direct this column as online this column as retail so all I need to do is just highlight the title with the six value below them I just go to this formula and I choose create from selection so I'm going to use the top row which is the direct online and retail as the individual name for the column so that's what I'm doing now when I do that if I go to my name box I will see direct online and retail so if I go online they tell me this is the range if I go to the direct uh, I go to retail yeah that's how they actually uh, select the names right so I already done that then I want to come here I want to know what is the total for online so I put that equals to sum online that's it and when I use the name online it works here and it will give me this answer so if I put here equals to sum I'm going to put in the uh, name here which is called direct now if I use my mouse to highlight I can still get it it's called direct now this range of cell will forever has a name right so it's called direct I can do it that way or I can just put here some uh, retail that's it that I have all my total done but this total here I'm not going to write any offset for that matter no um, I'm not going to go through that hassle again so I'm going to just leave them alone so what happened if I add in new data now I want them to change as well now here comes the magic right? here comes the magic eh? now Saiful has already released the magic to you but I'm going to extend extend from what Saiful have said now I'm going to convert this information that I have on my on my left this table into a table into a table now I'm going to use this keyboard shortcut here it says there control T you can go to insert table so I'm going to use control T right so I'm going to do that All right. so let me press press control T so they say that uh, you are going to convert a4 to f10 um, and my table has a header yes my table has a header so that's how it goes now for me I do not really like to make my table so colorful I will just put it back to none 
I'll just leave it like it's normal and I do not want any of those filter because that's not my subject matter at the moment. Huh? I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to take away. Now everyone will look at this like, oh, that is back to normal. Now it's back to normal by formatting. But this information now is no longer a range. It's actually a table. So when I click this, there is a table design up here. I'm going to name this from table one, I'm going to change it to another ta another name. So I'm going to call this one as sales data. Oops, I think I must have my caps lock on. Okay, let me remove that. So I'm calling it sales data. So this table now is called the sales data, right? So now let me let me show you a few advantage of doing this. Eh? Now my my purpose here is that I want to write a percentage. And uh, what I have done is I already put in the formatting here called percent. So let's see how it works. Huh? I'm going to write my formula in F5. That's it, no? F5. Look what happened when I complete my formula. Huh? When I click this equals to E5, but when I click it, it doesn't show E5, but it shows there at total. That means you are actually inside the table and you are actually using the title called total. And you're going to divide it by this grand total here. This grand total. Okay, this grand total. I'm not even using the rest, you know. I'm using this, which is E5 to E10. Uh, I'm using this. So let's press. Uh, let's make sure this one is locked. Because when it copy downs, we want them to stay. So we're going to copy and I'm going to press enter. Now, I'm not going to copy it down, but this is going to be done automatically for me. So you'll notice that it's actually referring to the same total because I lock it, right? I lock it. Uh, oops. Now this is the total. You notice that it actually just fill it down. I don't have to fill it down myself. I only write one formula. Now let's look at the overall total here. Can you all pay attention to all this total that I have? Huh? All this total, total, uh, this total, the direct total, the retail total. Huh? I'm going to make another copy of this, okay? Another copy of this. Okay, no, not without the total. Without the total, eh? copy. Then I come down here. I'll paste it. You notice that the formula will automatically fill up, fill up, and the answers here changes. Now, if you missed it, let me just show you it again. This is one two eight seven six six. Okay, look carefully. Yeah, eh? one two eight seven six six. Eh? And the range is E5 to E10. So let me just delete this and copy and paste again. Just copy this and paste. Now you notice now the range is no longer E5 to E10 but E12. That's why the total changes as well. All right, so that's how powerful a table can be to make your entire work here dynamic. So what you need to do? You just have to change this information into a table and uh, the rest is taken care when you extend your new record. However, not all situations your bosses like you to change this into a table. Not all situations you are allowed to change into a table. Therefore, I took the liberty to teach you the offset first. If you can remember the offset, good. Otherwise, you can watch this uh, recording which is going to be in the uh, Sifu time. You can watch this over and over again. All right. Now, I want to show you something extra here. All right. Something extra here. Now, what happened if I have a list of uh, names of all the cars? So, I have the um, the cars, right? So, C-A-R-S, cars. Now, if I, if I type here like Toyota, I have like Proton, I have like um, Honda. So there will be a few more, correct? There will be a few more items. Now I want to make this into a drop down list. So I want to have a drop down list. Okay, drop down list. Huh? So when I want to build a drop down list, this is what we normally do. We will go to the data. What if analysis will drop a list? We tell them we want to have a drop down list. Okay, and the source is just this one, this item here. So we just click OK. 
So let me just color this cell so that you know that this is the drop down list over here. So if I click this, I will have my Toyota, Proton and Honda. Now, question, if I'm going to put in here another car maker, BMW, all right? Um, I'm going to put in like uh, Merce, right? What else? Um, what else do I have? Uh, maybe I'll put in there uh, Daihatsu. Is that how I spell it? Yeah, that sounds better. Now, Daihatsu and, and so on, right? We have, what do you think about the list? It doesn't expand. Right? It does not expand. So, I'm going to remove this. Right? I'm going to remove this. They are, these are the three items that I have. So, I'm going to press here and press Control T. You know what's Control T? And it has a header. Okay. Right. Now, let's take a look. If I put this as Toyota Proton Honda, if I come down here now and I put here BMW, let's see what happened in this list. I have my BMW. What happened down here? If I put in MERZ, then I have my MERZ. So the list continue and this list will expand by itself. Now, there's no reason for you to do so many things. Each time you have a new item in your list, you have to go back, come here and change all this yourself. No, you don't have to do that. All right, take note, huh? you don't have to do that. So you just have to start with the original list, then, add, then remove whatever that you have added. Just make sure that it start with the three lists that you originally have. You make that as a table and then they will follow through every time you add on from there. Are we clear? So, yeah, I, I'm just going to talk a little bit about a table only. You're going to hear a lot of things about table very soon from my next uh, colleague, Shabina.